All right, everybody. So somebody tried to call me uh, using Facebook, and uh, we have to start all over. So um, you're going to have to get off of that live stream that now closed down and jump over to this one. So um, let me kind of start over and let you catch up with me over on this side of the house. And hopefully that doesn't happen again. I'm not quite sure why I got bumped off, uh, but clearly if somebody calls in, um, I get I get bumped off. Anyway, let me let me start again with a little bit about why uh, this format being in uh, this space, this sheltering in place space. Um, after Easter, I, I was delighted to celebrate with you on Easter morning. But Easter is really about a kind of a proclamation, a, um, a story about why the uh, both the death and again the proclamation of resurrection is so powerful. Um, come Easter morning. And so I think that was an appropriate time to kind of have the piano there and do some music and do kind of a sermon based um, time together. But for these experiences now, um, post Easter, I would rather keep it a little bit more intimate, a more like a conversation. So as I was suggesting before, as you log on uh, to make this feel like a community, like we're in this together, uh, feel free to um, say good morning to each other or shoot up an emoticon to kind of let people know uh, that you are present, that this is a, um, a collective experience that we're having. And I'm hoping today that it feels a little bit like a conversation, a um, little less like me talking at you and somehow us kind of imagining together how we can um, live more fully despite our shelter in place experience into the wonder of Easter, into the sense of what Easter is all about. So that's, that's what we're heading into uh, this morning. So I'm glad that, uh, glad that you're here and jumping on board for this. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of get us started with today was um, a follow up on the uh, conversation we were having at Easter. And in that conversation, I was inviting you to think about uh, your experience during this time, which is for many of us like an unprecedented time. And I'm, I'm going to reflect a little bit on that as well as we uh, talk this morning, um, that you might think about your own what we call the hero's journey. And as a hero, you are in some sense departing from the normalcy of life that we experienced prior to moving into this uh, wrestling match with this global pandemic. So you're, you're literally having to let go of that world that was, and we're all kind of in this, almost a little bit in shock, right? Trying to absorb the character and impact of this experience collectively but as we do that, we want to be able to foster something inside of ourselves that allows us to um, move through this experience into some frontier on the other side that we hope um, maybe affords us a little bit more global peace, a little bit more um, inner sensitivity and connectivity to each other and to the planet and to our place in the world, um, that we come out of this a, a different kind of people. So I, I'm hoping that you're um, framing these conversations as a way to uh, help facilitate your own hero's journey, a journey that um, requires that we leave a sense of uh, normalcy, that we move into wilderness or unknown. And that in that space, we find uh, ways that might inform uh, our future together. So that's, that's why I feel like constructing these little moments together that aren't really worship services, but are times of uh, collective reflection are uh, the best way to begin to uh, help you uh, to do that. All right. Um, so to start today, I want to use the pouring of the water. And it is a symbol that is in churches, the baptismal font. This happens to be the font that Jones 
Stevenson uh, <laughs> contributed to our congregation. Uh, but the pouring of the water is a, is a symbol for transition. Whether it be the children of Israel as they um, departed, began their own hero's journey, leaving Egypt and moving into a wilderness, they crossed through waters. Waters were for them this sort of transition time to commit to the journey that we're going to go on together. The same is true in the New Testament as well, that the use of the Jordan River has always been this sense of a moving through the Jordan, like the baptism of Jesus even, moving through the Jordan River, moving through river to begin a journey. For so many in that time, they used that kind of uh, transition through water as a marking place of how they entered into journey together. And so this morning, as we get started, I'm going to pour water into the font. And as you listen to the water, I would just invite you to um, either close your eyes or, or allow yourself permission to sink for the next 30 minutes into your own sense of our collective journey together and your own journey through this time. That you can kind of get in touch with um, the spirit and the character and the landscape of whatever the journey you're on now uh, feels like for you. And my hope is that as we spend a little time this morning, that um, some of the nuances and noticings of that initial uh, journey might come a little bit more to light as we reflect on the hope and promise and uh, wonder of the Easter message that's in today's story. So take a deep breath. Uh, feel the weight of your body today and the sense of where you are, who you're with, uh, and commit again today to um, moving into this collective journey together. So my hope is that the, um, the character of still waters are an invitation for you to be invited to immerse yourself now uh, in this time that we share so that it might uh, feed your soul, your body, and our wider, you know, collective body as well. So welcome. I'm glad you're here today. So let me begin by some reflections on um, this particular, the text for this particular Sunday. In some ways, I'm not sure that we can really blame them, but this is the Sunday anyway, uh, that is uh, traditionally the first Sunday after Easter. And what do we find the first Sunday after Easter? But those who were closest to the life of Jesus, those who had committed to follow uh, this person, and give themselves to the way of life that he constructed, were literally so afraid that they locked themselves behind closed doors. They locked themselves behind closed doors because the forces that took the life of Jesus were still vibrant and present inside their common life together, inside their culture. Those forces were the dominant forces of the day, and they just took the life of the person that they loved so dearly. And in that context, in response to that uh, horrific situation, they locked themselves behind closed doors in an upper room and were filled with absolute fear. 
it is hard for us to look back and blame them for that move. This spirit of Easter that we celebrate on Easter morning had not sunk in. First, they huddled in fear. In some ways, that's why I'm sitting in this room today to talk to you, because this is Lori and our my version of being uh, locked behind closed doors. We too are responding to forces on our planet right now that are uh, robbing people of their lives and their livelihoods. We too feel the strain of, of that force in our world. And so because of, um, if you will, the, the force of regulations, uh, here we are along with you, uh, not sitting in a pew on a Sunday morning or not out um, you know, celebrating collectively with friends and loved ones, but inside of our houses, locked up. I'm inside of this house, locked up, trying to preserve not only my personal health, just like you are, but to collaborate on allowing our culture to transition through absorbing this virus so that we might be healthy on the other side. In some ways, we too are in this locked down mode. Into this context for the early followers of Jesus, and I'm hoping for us as well, the story we have today is that the, uh, not the historical Jesus, but this living Christ that I talked about last week, um, this cosmic Christ, this boundless one, the one who uh, now embodies a sense of life that is grander than the forces of death, uh, the forces of brokenness that sort of um, is lifted up above all of that. This, this Christ enters into that locked space, right? Enters into that upper room behind the closed doors, engages with the early followers and invites them not into a life of fear, not into a life of fear, but into a life of peace. The words in John's gospel, if you want to read it, John chapter 20, is it goes a little bit like this. It says, I, my peace, my peace I give to you. And I'm telling you, my sense is all of us are searching for that degree of, um, of existential peace. That is in a sense, part of the motivation for the hero's journey to somehow um, feel some sort of inner peace, to feel a, a relational peace, to feel a, a, an invitation into a, a wider cosmic body that is a peaceful experience for all. That's the hope and longing that we have, even as we are isolated in our own little spaces even as we're isolated in our own little spaces. So how can we find and, and continue to um, explore that invitation into peace as we sit behind closed doors? Well, let me reflect a little bit on my own personal journey. And, um, and I've been struggling with this, as maybe many of you have. Uh, struggling to find words or ways to wrap myself around all of the anxiety I'm feeling at this time. Uh, I have a sort of a low-grade franticness that I feel is inside of my skin. I can't settle down. I can't find calm. Uh, my work patterns are disrupted. Um, there's a certain uh, buzz of anxiety and uncertainty that I feel about the future. Um, so I'm struggling probably like many people to kind of navigate this pause and requirement to be isolated, to be kind of closed down. I'm, I'm not navigating that frontier uh, very well. And, and I'm doing it, you know, th this is my, in the lap of luxury. I mean, uh, I'm in relative ease. I'm in my home. Uh, we have plenty of food in the refrigerator. Lori and I are both employed. Um, 
I've been listening to a lot of John Prine music, and I have to admit, I I feel like I'm maybe I don't deserve to be this miserable, <laughs> but I but I feel that way, right? I think about families who are struggling with uh, poor living conditions and having to navigate this, or access to food, or have lost their their vocations or their jobs, or their income has been reduced, or they have kids that they're navigating at home. There's a whole wealth of pressures on so many people right now. And so for me to feel this strain, I can't even begin to imagine uh, the strain that other people are experiencing and maybe you're experiencing as well. We're all having some sort of um, inner turmoil that we have to navigate that feels maybe a little bit like fear and trembling even while we're called to be attentive in a deep way to ourselves so that we can find that sense of collective peace together or inner peace. How are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? This last week, I reached out to um, a friend of mine who functions sometimes for me like a little spirit guide. Uh, She has been on a couple of uh, retreats with me. We've spent some time together over the over the years, and um, I I owed her a phone call, and so uh, we had a great discussion about what's going on right now. And she invited me into um, an idea that I think is helpful and is linked to the story of the early followers who are locked behind closed doors, and helped me to think about this differently too, from a kind of an Easter perspective. And I want to share that. Um, with you this morning as well. And kind of the insight that I got as we had this conversation was that, and I don't know what you think about this, but um, you should think about it as well. There's an idea that the inner me, the world inside of me, and the world inside of you is, is much more expansive than just the outer you, the, the physical you. This body that I'm in, this body that is currently shut down, that my inner self is is much more expansive than the way in which my body presents in the world. And that my physical body holds all of that expansive self. And so there is some kind of dissonance that happens when all of that expansive self is kind of shut down into this closed space or my body's own closed space as I sort of lock down in fear, uh, in nervousness as I engage the wider world. It's, it's like this tension that's created. And, and, and this sense of my large self feels kind of trapped inside of my own body these days. And I don't have any way for that large self, that expansive self, to to be in the world right now because it's all locked up tight and and almost claustrophobic in this experience that we're collectively having that we can't even meet face to face or I can't reach out and give you a hug or look out in the pews and see you on a Sunday morning or hang out with you in public places or be in the theater with others. All that's gone and all that has to get bottled up inside this one body, this one small isolated space. So I want you to think for a moment about embracing and remembering and noticing the expanse of your inner self, right? What is that? What is there for you? Think about um, all of the history that you have that creates who you are. Think about all of the interconnectedness that creates who you are. Connectedness to place, to people, to experiences, to memories. That is the expanse of you that is inside of here. Think about all the hopes and the dreams and the uh, anticipations that you have within you. That's the expanded self. It is this sort of um, wider body that holds you inside of this small physical body that we each have 
inside this small physical space, as intimate as it might appear. It is that um, wider body that I think is aching to go on the journey, to go on the hero's journey, even as the physical body is stuck in place. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you. Hopefully you get a little bit of sense that this um, wide self is what's aching to be in this game, even though it struggles to find a way to do that in this time. Now, how is that like the, the Jesus story for today, where Jesus comes to a bunch of people locked in a room out of fear and says, look, don't let fear be the thing that guides you. Find your way into peace. And my sense is, and this is what I want to share with you this morning, my sense is that that peace comes when you are engaged in that wider body, that you remember that you are not just an individual uh, locked down so that you might survive this, but rather that you're not an individual at all. You are a, a deep and broad and beautiful and mysterious and expansive self that longs, that longs to, um, to give expression to life in such wonderful and grand ways. That peace, I think, is connected to this invitation to um, tend to the grander self, the wider self, the bigger self, maybe the what we might think of as the spirit body, the big body that we're all a part of. And Jesus, post-crucifixion, was a manifestation of that kind of body. And his presence with people in fear was an invitation to let themselves loose inside of that grand body. How can we do that together? That's what I would encourage you to think about today as we think about how to begin together a hero's journey. That the hero's journey is not uh, locking down so that we might survive this. The hero's journey is entering in to that broader sense of who you are and giving it time and energy and ability despite the lockdown, to be able to explore and wonder, to nurture the depth of all the connectedness and, and, um, and intimacy that is part of your wider self. So today I want to invite you into a little experience uh, to do a little bit of that together. I encourage you to have a candle with you. I have my little candle on the table here. Um, and I, I'm, I'm going to invite us to um, light that candle, or if it's lit already, just to hold that candle. And today, to let that candle not be your lockdown self, but I want to guide you in a moment to imagine your um, broader sense of who you are, the expansiveness of who you are, and to invite you to tend to that during this time, to be attentive to that um, uh, what would you call it? Almost like, it's almost like your eternal self. Sometimes we use, would use the word soul. Imagine that you're holding your own soul today and the beauty and wonder of that. And as you hold that, let that be your guide into the journey of a sense of peace. So I invite you to light your candle today. I will light mine. And then I'll guide us in a short meditation piece. That reminds us that we are, of course, more than the bodies that are locked in our own little spaces right now. We are much more than that indeed. So take a moment and focus in on your candle. And take a couple of cleansing breaths. And for a moment, I want you to imagine that this candle is your expansive self, your whole self. 
What is present for you there? Memories, full and rich. Moments where you experience life in all of its richness and fullness. Maybe it's other geographies and locations that you've visited or vacationed to that kind of hold a, a peaceful space for you. Maybe it's time up at Lake Tahoe or cycling over in Europe or hiking an unknown territory or visiting the vineyards in South Africa. Whatever those expansive places might be, that's a part of you. Allow for the candle for a moment to hold just the vast network of relationships in which your life swims. Relatives, loved ones, co-workers, the very fabric of our social connections one to another, that's who you are. Allow the candle to hold all of your dreams and hopes that dance in your soul as you lie at, in bed at night dreaming of tomorrow or reflecting on days past. That's who you are. That's who's going on this hero's journey. And finally, allow this candle to invite you into the cosmic body, a body that's wider, grander, and more expansive, almost eternal, that holds every life, all of life, life itself. And then in a moment, connect the little body that holds the candle to that vast and wondrous body that you imagine today. And as you do, take a couple of cleansing breaths in gratitude for the invitation to journey into the heart of peace Peace that is present for you inside the wide body we share collectively. It is the cosmic Christ, however you imagine that, whether it be the vibrancy of the life of Jesus, or maybe just simply the wide gift of life itself that says, my peace, this peace, I give to you this day. Let's journey into that degree of peace together, shall we? Amen. So thanks for that, uh, indulging me and hopefully this conversation a little bit in um, thinking about um, how we live in our bodies connected to our expansive bodies connected to the expanse of body itself, right? I'm going to try to do that myself uh, in the upcoming week. I've committed to this gal who I talked to who kind of gave me this idea today um, to try a couple of things this week that allow me to um, spend more time in that body and a little less time in my own little anxious body. Uh, so I would invite you to think about ways you can do that as well. And one of the ways to do that, I want to invite us into via all of the um, comments that you're sharing today is to just have a, a, a moment of gratitude for all of the many lives that we know are connected to our own that are sustaining us during this time. 
I want you to think about for a minute um, the people um, or the experiences that you're grateful for that help hold us all together, even though we're all um, isolated from each other. The people maybe who are making personal sacrifices or health sacrifices so that we can continue on. Uh, the people who are maybe uh, educating our children from a distance so that they can continue to learn. Maybe it's the people who are delivering your mail every week or the grocery clerk who's processing all that food all day long down at Diablo Foods or wherever it happens to be. Or maybe it's the farmers and the farm workers in the fields that are uh, continuing to uh, work the land so that we might have sustenance during this time. Or all the transportation that the drivers that are constantly showing up in those brown trucks and those white trucks uh, bringing you all the stuff you need. I don't care who it is, but I want you to just spend a moment of pause and then using the comment section, let's just collectively name all the people that we are grateful for, that create this wider web of life that we are becoming a little bit more aware of um, as we understand our codependence and independence on each other. All right, so take a moment today uh, rather than sharing the peace, let us uh, burst out in an expression of gratitude for all those who are connected to our lives together. And as you do that, I'll transition to another chair closer to the fire and um, get ready for our closing piece together. Thank you for starting to share some of your um, reflections and the people that you're grateful for during this time. Uh, I, I think that's one way for us to, to think about um, how to foster a sense of peace during this time is by living with some sense of, of deep gratitude for all of the network of relationships that are outside of this physical body in which we live. It could even be the, the body of our church community. It could be the body of neighbor. Um, I'm today just deeply grateful, um, like I've said before, for our CSA programs, our community supported agriculture programs. This last week, we had a new member join who um, is a senior citizen who feels too vulnerable to go out and get her CSA box. And so uh, as the boxes are dropped off, we are now delivering that box right to her doorstep. And I'm, you know, in that transaction, I'm so deeply grateful for the farmer, all the people who transport the food and for our own community and their willingness to deliver this food to this woman. So she has some of the freshest fruits and vegetables available because she can't go to the store. She simply can't risk that. And so that we're able to bring that nourishment to her doorstep, uh, I think is an invitation into this sense of the kind of peace that both Jesus was talking about with his anxious early followers and that we all strive to live into as we move through this time, through this hero's journey that we're on into some new way of being um, life together with others. To close today, as you reflect on all the people in your own lives and all the institutions or organizations that help you feel like you're part of a vibrant whole, I want to, um, clearly I've been listening to John Prine too much, I want to share some lyrics from one of his songs if I can find them in my notes today. Uh, these lyrics I want to have serve as sort of a mantra for our, um, the insights that we shared today. John Prine 
wrote a song called Boundless Love. Boundless Love. And this is the chorus of that song, Boundless Love. And I want you today, as you've spent a few minutes together with me and with one another, uh, to let yourself sink into again this sense of uh, love that is boundless. Because as we breathe in this sense of collective peace, uh, maybe we can be an expression of that boundless love for one another. John writes in the chorus of this song, surround me with your boundless love. Confound me with your boundless love. I'm drowning in the sea. I'm lost as I can be. And you find me with your boundless love. So surround me with that boundless love. My hope for you this week, as you journey into that broad sense, expansive sense of self, that is so, um, like is the essence of life itself, that you might not only feel as if you are surrounded with a boundless love, but that you're a collaborator in that boundless love, one for another. Amen. And with that um, word, I want to send you on your uh, journey with a, kind of the language that oftentimes religious people use in Christian communities of the ironic benediction that we've used each week to kind of close these times together. And, and grateful that you were able to join me here in my house. Um, it's like having you all over and letting you be a part of my little um, uh, shelter in place experience just as I'm a part of your sheltering place experience. But go with these words from Aaron from 4,000 years ago. For as you continue this hero's journey through this time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord um, always look upon you with graciousness and favor. May this Lord of life be the one that invites you into a sense of peace this day and every day that is ahead. Amen. All right, a couple of announcements. It's announcement time. Thank you, number one, for being a part of this experience. Uh, I love the Facebook Live thing because it creates a dynamism that you can share with one another. Uh, that I get to experience too. Um, so thank you for that. We'll be back uh, next week. So let me talk a little bit about that as well. Uh, there's a couple other events that are going to happen today. Uh, first at 11 o'clock, our confirmation class meets again. So there's a Zoom confirmation class that's happening. So if you're in confirmation, jump on board to that. Uh, in addition, our council will meet at 11 a.m. on Zoom to kind of figure out, you know, how are we doing right now and where are we going to go uh, in the future? I, you know, there's a lot to consider about how we will be church over the next couple of years um, because the onboarding is going to go a lot slower than when we had to pull back. So how do we slowly evolve our way into a sense of what church might be or the experience of church, which is just means the way we gather um, can be shaped that provides you some sense of depth and um, kind of vibrant spiritual experience. What is that going to look like going forward? Um, your leadership is going to have to begin to wrestle with that. And so keep them in your thoughts as we do that. Um, next week is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And while we were planning um, to have a big event on the courtyard next Sunday, uh, we're not going to be able to do that. So it's going to be another uh, streaming event. But I'm hoping next week to invite uh, two guests to join us through a recorded Zoom call this week. Two guests that have, uh, I think, incorporated a real spiritual sense of how we are held in um, the cosmic body that we call Mother Earth. 
right? How Mother Earth is the body in which we live, move, and have our being, and how deeply spiritual that is. Uh, how can we, um, how can we live attentive to that as we begin to emerge from our locked rooms? That's one of the great journeys forward that we as a, as a, as humanity have to deal with going forward. So that will happen next Sunday, uh, and I'll hopefully have the live stream done outside. So I'm planning on being here uh, somewhere in my own backyard where I have decent internet connection, and we'll celebrate Earth Day next Sunday outdoors with a little bit of sense of how um, Earth body might manifest spirit body for us. So that's what we'll focus in on next week. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about a little bit is uh, this week, uh, our support hub people will meet together through a Zoom meeting and just touch base with each other. Uh, my thanks to all the people who are part of that support hub and uh, helping kind of keep us connected during the week with phone calls or emails to each other. Uh, so thanks to them, and they'll be coming together this week to try to figure out uh, how they might uh, continue uh, to be supportive of our community life together. Okay? So with that, uh, thanks for being a part of this day. Uh, I'll let you go. I'm going to go off and have another cup of coffee. Um, I wasn't able to wear my pajamas this morning, but I, I do have my slippers on, so that's a good thing. And my, my hope is for you as you enter into this week that um, despite all of the inner anxiety or fear or whatever's going on for you, that sort of closed sense that we're all having to deal with, uh, that these moments might help you begin to open up that aperture a bit and to see your body embedded in this wider body, this body of peace and joy and hope that is inviting us maybe into a new kind of future together. It is an honor and a delight to be able to take that adventure with you. Peace and have a beautiful day.